Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is about slot dozing. And we've kind of covered this in a previous video, but here in the studio, we can break it down a little bit easier and a little more visually to where you can kind of understand what's going on. So we're gonna flip over to the top down view, back to the die cast models. So what we've got here is our little D5 dozer, and we're gonna slot doze in this direction. Let's say we wanted to take this whole area down by two or three feet. Well, the way most rookies look at this is they go, well, by God, we're gonna drop the blade all the way back here, and we're gonna shove as much dirt forward as possible, and then we're gonna back up, and we're gonna go again, shove as much dirt as possible, and we're gonna do that over and over until we get down to two feet. Well, what's the problem with that? Why is that an issue? Well, the problem is, if you think about it, we're gonna load up our blade right here. Let's throw, let's throw some dirt on our blade. In fact, by God, we'll use a, a brown cap to represent our dirt. My God, look at how official we are. And so we've loaded up. Well, guess what? We have to push that cap all the way down here, which is doing what from a fuel standpoint? Well, by God, we've loaded up that dozer all the way back here. That sure is a lot of fuel to push that back. Now we're gonna come back. We've got another load of dirt. My God, we're gonna push that all the way. Boy, that's a lot of fuel. That's a lot of work for the machine, and that's a really long push. So let's go about this a different way. And by the way, we're also gonna keep track of, this is our slot right here, right? And we're gonna keep track of that. Well, what if instead of starting way back here, what if we took our first bite about a machine length, and we're gonna pretend the top of our pad here is where our dirt's gonna end. What if we came back about the length of our machine, and we really buried our blade and loaded it up right here? And so we've kind of got a slope coming into it. We hit grade right about here. And all of this, we're gonna, we're gonna represent all of that material whoo, gets pushed there and is to grade. So that section right here forward is to grade. Well, now what if we go back and we go about a machine length beyond where our grade starts about there and we do the same thing. We're gonna load up with our dirt. Whoo, there it is, full blade. We're gonna we're down to grade right about here, and so we're gonna shove that into our pile. Well, there's a couple things that are happening here on the second push. First of all, you can see that the distance we're pushing is significantly smaller. In fact, let me check my camera. Yep. Okay, we're still good. So you can see the distance we're pushing is significantly shorter than it was before. That's fuel savings number one. But let's talk about what happens. As we come down into here, what's gonna to happen to our dozer? Well, if you remember, we actually started this initial cut. This line that I drew is where we're at grade, right? But we've kinda of got a ramp going downhill right here, which just so happens to be where we're loading our blade. So we're gonna start our initial pass, so we're gonna bury, we're gonna to start to collect a little dirt, and then what's our dozer gonna do? We're gonna to go to the straight on view. Our dozer, is going to come into that cut and start pitching down. Well, guess what that does for us? Now we're not only pushing with the power of the machine, but we're now pushing with the weight of the machine as we start to tip down into the hole. We have a lot more push power, which means we can really load up our blade. My God, on this second pass, we're gonna have rolling dirt because we've got that much more power. And now, let's say by about here, we get down to grade. Now this whole area is to grade. Boom, all of that dirt goes to the end. And I reverse about another machine length past where I start my ramp. If we continue to do this, you can see already, we're just gonna keep marching this back. So there's our next line, back. There's our next line, back. And you can see what's happening is over time, we're extending the length of our push, but we're not doing work during that whole push. We're only really doing work on the initial load up of the blade here. And then once the blade is loaded, we're just maintaining because remember, we've got this whole area here already to grade. So I don't have to keep loading my blade up. All I have to do is maintain the push on this flat area. That's gonna be a huge fuel savings, but more importantly, it's gonna be way more efficient on your time. We're not pushing every blade of material the entire length of this run. We're slowly marching our way back. This is way, way, way more efficient. 
then doing all of your pushes the entire length. So that's how you properly slot those. Now, let's say we've got this whole area here. We'll go ahead and scribble it out. That is now to grade. So now we've got this whole slot to grade. Well, that's awesome, but now I wanna move over because we're doing this whole area, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna move over and I generally like to go about half to two thirds of a blade width wide between my slots. And all we're concerned with here is when we start creating this second slot, let me draw my lines here for our second slot. My concern is I want to keep this slot integrity. I don't want it this to blow out into my other slot because once that happens, you no longer have the slot. And the whole reason we do a slot is because it's keeping the material in front of your blade. It's not allowing it to roll off to the sides. You're actually able to get way more production when you're in a slot. And so that's really the only concern I have here when I'm picking the, the width of my slot is I don't want it to blow out. And so if you can do that with a third of a blade width, you know, by all means, just don't flirt with disaster so much that you cause yourself a lot of grief on the back end. And so all that to say, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna start up here, we're gonna get this to grade, and then we're gonna back up, we're gonna get this to grade, we're gonna back up and we're gonna get this to grade. And finally, we got this whole area to grade. Whoa, that's awesome. And we've been so productive today. This is so much more efficient than we normally are. My God, Brian, you got me a raise. Just wait. Now what do we do with this, this gap in the middle here? We, we gotta remember, we still have all of this material here. What are we gonna do with it? And what's the most efficient way to deal with it? Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shuffle over just a little bit so you guys can see. We're gonna back up. In our first pass, we're gonna shave and we're gonna push it into, let me use my other marker so you guys can see. I know my drawings get a little messy here. We're gonna go in and push it down this slot. Because remember, if we can stay in the slot, that's not gonna allow all that material to roll off of our blade. We can push significantly more dirt if we stay in the slot and utilize our slot. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come at it and we're gonna shave this big old chunk and we're gonna push it to right about here to where we're in line with our slot. Now this is gonna take time and technique to get used to it and figure out what you can handle. A lot of times what I'll do is I will actually leave my pile right there. And the key is you want to be to where your dozer is pretty dang straight and a little beyond where you start to straighten out. So if we made our turn, I'm gonna push until I'm straight a little bit and I'll show you why here in just a second. And then we're gonna leave that pile. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna shave just a little more, not a ton. I'm not gonna get super aggressive here, but we're gonna shave another one and load up my blade even more. And this is why we wanted to go beyond where we were straight. Because your dozer, as we've talked about in other videos, your dozer has maximum pushing power when you're pushing in a straight line and both tracks are putting out maximum power. And so if we didn't, if we left ourselves at an angle here, our dozer's really gonna struggle to push all that dirt. But if we left it to where we are going straight, we now have this dirt that we left sitting for us plus the dirt on our blade. And now if I've got, a, I've got a little momentum and I'm pushing straight, I should be able to push both of those piles all the way to the end. And you can see we've already carved out a huge chunk of this middle windrow. Now what we're gonna do, once we get that all the way to the end, we're gonna back up and we're gonna come from this direction. And now we're gonna shave this wedge here. And we're gonna go down this slot. Same thing, I'm gonna leave it where it's straight, right? My dozer, I came in, took it, I got straight. Now I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna do another pass and take a little more. And now I've got two loads on my blade. I come into it right here, same thing. Now I picked up the second, boom, all the way to the end. I don't know if you guys can see this because I'm shuffling my paper all over. Hopefully you can. Okay, there we go. And we're just gonna keep doing that back and forth. Once you come back here, now we're gonna take this slot two passes. That's how you're gonna whittle down those middle windrows 
and stay efficient. And when you get to the very end, you can do straight passes. You're so close, it's not gonna really make a material difference from a production standpoint. So that in a nutshell is how you slot those efficiently. This isn't gonna work in every single application that you find yourself in. There's gonna be times where slot dozing works. There's gonna be times where you just have to do it, you know, the old school way where you can't just be as efficient. It just depends on site conditions like everything else that I talk about in my videos. But this should get you a lot more production. It should save you on fuel and make you look like a champ for your foreman. So that being said, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next Down and Dirty.